But he actually targeted something, her mom laughed. What on earth is that cat up to? And this is what Rufus ah. looks like. <sighs> After breakfast, Piccadilly stepped outside to look, and Rufus remained motionless, staring at the garden. I don't see anything, she scowled, but the cat paid her no mind. That evening, she peeked again, and sure enough, the cat sat staring. Mom, what is Rufus doing? Maybe he's waiting for something. Like what? asked Piccadilly. I'm not sure. Fireflies? Yes, that must be it. Fairy flies, said Piccadilly as she headed off to bed. Fairy flies? I said fireflies, said Mom. But Piccadilly was too lost in thought to hear. And you can see why she might have gotten confused. Because sometimes fireflies can look like fairies. Piccadilly awoke the next morning, glowing brighter than the June sun. Good morning, her mother said as she held up two shirts, which looks good today. The polka dots, said Piccadilly. Suddenly, Piccadilly's eyes opened wide. What is it? asked her mother. Did you remember a dream? Fairies like cake. And grabbing a scarf and holding it high, she ran out of the room with it billowing behind her. Something like this. Hi there. That afternoon, Piccadilly banged on her brother's door. Come in, said Sam. She jumped into his lap and placed a paper crown on his head. Can we make cupcakes? Cupcakes, asked Sam. Fairies like cake. He smiled. I don't think I can argue with that. Sam spent the rest of the afternoon helping Piccadilly bake cupcakes, topped with icing and rainbow sprinkles. How magical they looked. When do we get to eat them, he asked. Piccadilly frowned. They're for the fairies, remember? That seems like a lot of cake for little fairies. But you can see why Sam might have wanted to eat them, because they really mm. did look magical. That's fake, mm -hmm. but it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> each to have one. And mom and dad too? Sam smiled. Yes, mom and dad too. Sam set four aside and gave the rest to Piccadilly, who promptly headed out to the garden. Leaning into the circle, yet careful not to tread within it, she placed the cake in its center. Sam watched her. After all that hard work, you're giving them to Rufus? You're funny. Piccadilly frowned, handing him the empty plate. Funny in a good way, Dilly, as in unexpected. Piccadilly waited a moment, just staring into the circle, then feeling a little bit sleepy after all that baking. She sat under a tree, leaning against its bark and basking in its shade. She thought about brothers and teaspoonfuls and what fairies might look like eating cake. Suddenly, a tiny man appeared within the circle. Piccadilly blinked several times, but without a doubt, there he stood. He was quite thin, almost stick-like, nearly impossible to see but for his wings, which left a sparkling trail as he moved. Are you a fairy? asked Piccadilly. A fairy prince, actually. Didn't you see my crown? He frowned. Piccadilly had, in fact, missed the jeweled headpiece, which blended so perfectly into the fairy's sun-kissed hair. But she did not wish to offend. Of course, Your Majesty. Did you come for the cake? 
but you can see why she might have missed the crown because even though it was beautiful, it did blend in with the fairy's hair as the same color. And it was little. Okay. He glanced at the cupcakes and smiled. Ah, nice. But no, I came to bring you this. And almost from nowhere, he pulled out a ring, golden and glowing. It's just like mine. Similar, but this one sparkles more. It's enchanted, you know. A magic ring, delighted, Piccadilly tossed her old ring into the woods. me over. A ring for a ring. We believe in being fair, after all. Of course, because you're a fair Eve. Piccadilly smiled and slipped the gift onto her little finger. Thank you. But what ring did I give you? Why, the fairy ring, of course. Mind you, don't be gardening here. Some among us get quite testy when disturbed. What do you need the flower circle? I mean, the fairy ring for Mr. Fairy. It's the portal. It's the door that lets us visit. And what are you going to do with the cakes? The prince smiled. Do you know what today is? Piccadilly thought for a second. Is it the first day of summer? Indeed, it's the summer solstice, the longest day of the year. We always celebrate it with the grandest of parties. <laughs> A party? But why? On account of all the sunlight. The day is quite magical. It lasts well into the night. If it's night, how can it still be day? You're talking riddles, Mr. Fairy. You're funny. The little being frowned. No, I mean funny as in unexpected. The prince's eyes lit up and leaning on a nearby leaf, he laughed and then he laughed some more. And without quite understanding why, Piccadilly laughed too. It's a polka. What's a polka? asked Piccadilly. Why, it's a most festive type of a dance. Yes, but what's a polka? A party. And you should see the finery, so many colors. It looks like a dancing flower garden. Well, do you know what Piccadilly thought of when she heard that? She thought of something like that. I can't actually see it, can I? asked Piccadilly. The fairy flew up before her and glanced from side to side. And then he spoke at her. Ordinarily, that's correct. But on summer solstice, extra magic is in the air. And unusual things can happen. Just because the day's long? No, 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 it's very complex. Each dew droplet captures a sun twinkle, which triggers a golden spark, which activates a speck of summer delight and inspires the glow of the fairies. This thought, Piccadilly could hardly contain her joy. Then on the day with the most sunlight, the fairies must glow more than ever. Indeed they do. So much so in fact that you might even catch a glimpse of them. But enough chattering. I must thank you for the cakes and be on my way. Party to prepare for. Be sure to guard that ring. It'll protect you from mischievous fairies. They like to play tricks now. Two called Piccadilly, but the fairy had already vanished. Oh, Piccadilly yawned and headed inside. Did you have a nice nap under the tree, asked her mother. Nap? No, I met a fairy. Her mother laughed. <laughs> I wish my dreams were as fun as yours. A dream? A tear rolled down Piccadilly's cheek. And precisely as this single tear fell to her hand, a sunbeam danced through the window 
And a sparkle caught her eye. On her little finger, kissed by her tear, sat her ring, and how it twinkled in the sunlight. Piccadilly laughed, and then she laughed some more, so much, in fact, that her mother joined in. Piccadilly began to twirl until the whole room was spinning, and then stumbling slightly, she plucked to the floor. Mom? Yes, Piccadilly? Can you teach me how to polka? And at the very end, you get to see the fairy polka, and you see Piccadilly peeking, and you get to decide did she imagine it all? Or did she get to see it? What do you guys think? There isn't? Yes, there is. The tooth fairy? Do you think she, so you think she imagined it? No, because there's no such thing as like, well, <laughs> well, some people believe in fairies and some people don't. So I'm not going to go either way on whether they're real or not. But I very, I love to hear what other people think. <laughs> right?